So panel, the info slide is quite elaborate, but as PM, I'm going to do a couple of things and show you why it is quite imperative for the house to regret the existence of metaverse in the first place. But one, a couple of things, the house now what I'm going to do. Show you what the metaverse is likely to look like when it is being implemented full time. Show you the impact it's going to have on society and also the individual, ordinary individuals as you have them uh, status quo. Argumentation on why it is necessary to regret metaverse and why not to have it in existence in the first place and show you how the counterfactual with the status quo right now, a world without metaverse is a better alternative for uh, human beings, right? But one, on the metaverse, what, what is it more likely to look like as we got from the info slide, right? So it seeks to give more solvency to the kind of problems we find in society. What that means is that it seeks to meet the needs of, say, injustice against, say, minorities, um, starvation, whatever things people lack within society. It seeks to uh, uh, meet those needs. But second, let's realize that it's a very virtual world. What that means is that there are countless or limitless possibilities in the meta metaverse and the kind of things that you can do in the, in the metaverse virtually. But secondly, it also serves, or it would also serve as some form of escapism from reality, as we've seen, like uh, even the internet tends to do. This is a far more advanced version of the inter internet, which what that means is that it will serve as a, a, an advanced form of escapism from reality for individuals. What that also means is that it will tend to be more addictive than the conventional virtual uh, uh, virtuality that we have in status quo. That is something that you take note, and why yeah. that is something that is bad. But secondly, on the new revolution that would come with the force of metaverse. Realize it's yet to be implemented full force. What that means is that there is yet, even without the full implementation, there's already social and economic pressure for individuals to venture or companies to venture into metaverse. What that means is that there's a lot of capitalistic drive to capture into the kind of potential that, virtual potential that exists in metaverse. But what that means also is that there's a high likelihood that the kind of aims it wants to achieve in the metaverse, the virtual reality, for instance, freedom, equality, uh, good ideologies in virtual reality, those things are more likely to be met because of the kind of drive that goes into those things, right? What that means is that if you go into uh, uh, the metaverse, there's a, a beautiful world like you find in the uh, um, info slide, there's absolute equality, no form of human suffering, those are the kind of things that you are likely to see in the metaverse. Now, why is that wrong? First of all, impact on, on society before I move to individuals and our counterfactual. One, the bare existence of a virtual reality, what that means is that it's not tangible, it's not very real. What that means is that uh, the mere existence of a virtual reality, that is so much of a heaven that people would want to look like. It's, first of all, one, the impact on state structures, especially government, and in reaction to solving societal problems. It reduces the kind of agency and the drive and the pressure that it's on governments to actually venture into solving realistic and real life problems, right? Because where they exist, the kind of world where metaverse exists, where individual can just walk into the metaverse, where families face, uh, women facing oppression can just go into the metaverse and the, uh, there is absolute peace, absolute whatever. There exists less incentive for them to pressure the government to want to solve those problems in the first place. Because a key factor, a key factor of the drive that forces government to uh, cause change is the pressure from individual groups. Where that is lacking, a key factor of the pressure that is necessary for them to cause social change is very lacking. It is very fallacious to think that, oh, seeing things there which is more likely to make you addictive, which means you spend more time there, would make you first government. That those things won't exist in, in, in uh, 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 metaverse. But secondly, also, there's a huge reduction in the political will to act to solve societal problems. Because there's also already capitalistic interest, capitalistic uh, uh, delving into the kind of potential metaverse exists. What that means is that there's a gradual shift of resources from the problems you are facing socially to the kind of potential or how we can build metaverse to be, which is highly virtual. No. Basically, yeah. there's a huge re reduction in the focus of social exploration and social resources to improve human life in reality. I've already told you, metaverse is, some, uh, uh, is very, very virtual. What that means is that human reality and the kind of things that exist in reality are, is very uh, um, opposite or not the kind of things that uh, exist in metaverse doesn't necessarily transcend into social reality. What that means is that if you go into meta hey, sorry, metaverse and you have six parts, even if you are a glutton and you are uh, in reality a, a, an obese person, sorry, that reality doesn't transcend to your reality in society. So even though you might 
create your virtual personhood in metaverse as a person with very nice body. In reality, you are still someone who is an obese person, someone who needs uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, drive to change. But because of the addiction and the kind of social capture that metaverse has on you, you are less incentivized to want to do that in the first place. But secondly, on the impact of, of the individual, like I've, I've already begun, there is a less incentive on the individual to want to get better or sustain himself. Ordinarily, what everybody wants is to live happily, get, get uh, uh, resources and drive. The incentive of metaverse is something that is more likely to reduce that incentive. Why is that, more li uh, why is that something that is more likely to happen? Because oh, I don't have very addictive, uh, that's something that's very uh, highly addictive, which means that you are likely to spend more time there and more likely to imagine what your life would be like if you had metaverse, not working actually to get those things in society. Yes? Quick question. Air conditions exist. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we have stopped fighting global warming? It is very disingenuous to compare the analogy of an air condition and global warming. Because even when uh, 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 you have uh, uh, air condition, which is something that, uh, uh, an argument that I'm going to, because at the initial stage of metaverse, it won't be accessible to everybody. What that means is that only the highly uh, resourced person will have access to this. But even if in the later part of it gets uh, more accessible to everybody, we think that's a world we regret because it extends that, that kind of harm and the kind of addiction that I'm talking about. Because individuals are more likely to spend time in the real world, real world fixing actual problems, but instead they focus time on uh, uh, they, they are more addicted and uh, uh, realize that more incentive for them to remain in the uh, metaverse is because of the highly addictive nature of the nature of metaverse. That's a, an, an, an added incentive for them not to want to even come out in the real world in the first place. But secondly, on why uh, 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 the more broad access, which they are more likely to argue, is something that's very problematic. Because in status quo, where individuals just want to thrive, where you, uh, uh, there is a more likely outcome that metaverse would get, have a widespread and get access to everybody. It is very problematic where individuals are less incentivized and less, uh, uh, their is incentive to drive and actualize in the real world is very reduced, especially that's the potential of metaverse. Lots to come and argue on the counterfactual and why activism, those things will be reduced by metaverse, but it is better in our world. Proud to or propose. Hello. There is a story of a bush boy who, by virtue of his circumstances he was born into, lacks the experience and the opportunity to experience certain things available to the global elite and to those who are privileged. Those who are privileged by virtue of the lottery of birth and by virtue of certain circumstances humans be human beings have no control of. In our world, in modern times, there has been an option to make these resources, to make these experiences available to this said bush boy. The question is, is it plausible? Is it reasonable? And is it better? Is it even bad for us to side with government in the sense of rejecting it? We must note that we want to break down the social hegemony and control over experiences that thwarts the ability for persons to self-actualize. And if the metaverse gives us the opportunity to do so, then we root for it. But what is the metaverse? Note something, this is very important. It is a virtual reality system or universe that hinges primarily on audio-visual communications, meaning it does not replace real stuff, right? So if I am in the metaverse and my stomach is hungry, I would feel that I am hungry and go and look for food. So then... <laughs> The bad mouthing and the sort of straw manning that went on in that right. does not really come to bear. But then the control of metaverse technology, which is something that is very important, right? Note that the technology used in the, like in metaverse, which is virtual technology, started with corporations like Sandbox way, way back in 2017, even before the creation, even before Facebook or Meta entered the market. Now, the technology in and of itself used in creating the metaverse is not monopolized, meaning other corporations can create metaverses, particularly gaming corporations. And note that in capitalist economies, these gaming corporations would obviously want to challenge Facebook. So 
the attempted monopolization and control by certain large corporations on your side does not exist on our side because the technology is not monopolized. It is open for use. So basically, what do we argue from our side as opening of right, opening opposition? One, globalization. Two, blockchain technology. Three, choice, co-governance, and real-world impact, which will clash Marple shamelessly as he made his points. Now, on globalization, note how I've already told you how the bush boy from wherever can experience Paris, can experience these great things he wants to experience wherever he wants in the world. Now, the plus side of that is that you then give people the opportunity to feel good about themselves and self-actualize in themselves. Why? Because in your world, there is no opportunity for them to get in touch with these experiences, to feel or to see what it means to be ideal or what it means to have a society. All people, some people have known is abuse. All some people have known is, is um, um, degradation and whatever. We are giving people this opportunity and it is right. But secondly, we are getting a bit technical. I'll take you through. We are getting a bit technical into blockchain technology, right? Blockchain technology basically hinges on transparency. It is a public ledger. That means that any transaction between two or more or whatever persons is recorded on that public ledger, right? Meaning people would have access to it, people would know, and there is transparency. As opposed to your government, your system in the real life, where government transactions are not open for everyone to see. What we are showing or what we are telling you is that in the creation of the express, like the creation of different um, um, universes, you give people the opportunity to live in a free, fair, and transparent manner. But note how this is even better than the like, traditional internet, right? Because traditional internet hinges greatly on algorithms. Algorithms whereby YouTube or Google will tell you what you have to watch and not necessarily what you want to watch. So you take Google and it's basically telling you certain propaganda by virtue of certain algorithms they control in Silicon Valley. What we are doing in the metaverse is that we are giving you the ability to control your own environment, to control your own aspirations, and to live your own experiences. But then, this is where choice comes in, right? And it comes to the point of the lottery of birth. I am in Ghana. I never chose to be in Ghana, right? You are all here. You never chose to be here. With the metaverse, you give people the opportunity to choose, like, to choose the kind of experiences they want to experience, right? And why is that key? What is the impact of that? You give people what we mean, like the opportunity, because people have seen it close hand, right? With the um, creation and the rise of social media, they see Santorini, they see um, Paris, they see Finland. With the metaverse, you can experience Santorini, you can experience Paris, you can experience Finland. And we feel that this is key in the sense that we, you would be able to experience these things without government control of money, because government controls money. Government controls inflation, right? Inflation is as a result of the poor maintenance of these government um, um, of, uh, bodies. So because the city collapses, you will not be able to travel because of Akufuado's irresponsibility. But with the metaverse, we don't care whether or not Akufuado is responsible. You would, you would experience Paris, you would experience right. Finland. Now, then core governance, right? I've already told you how it works on public ledgers and public contributions. So before you do something, you need approval from a group of people, like from everybody with a crypto wallet, right? And why is this important? Because when data bank is taking big decisions at the top of your conventional catch, they don't come and ask you. But in the metaverse with cryptocurrency, like how cryptocurrency has moved and made girls in the metaverse, you are able to have control over your own wallet and how you spend. Oh. Are you saying that having an experience or having a feel of your aspiration makes you go to actually having them in the This is... Elisha will deal with the second one very well, but this is where real world impact comes in, right? Once you are able to experience these things in virtual reality, you are better incensed to come out and replicate them in the real world, right? So in your model, you'd never experience Europe, you never experience how um, Barcelona is planned and everything. You just live in Ghana and that's all. In our model, you experience it. And by virtue of that experience, you are better placed, you are better motivated, you are better moved to come out into Ghana and actually create the change that is needed. Palo, note something. We have lived in a controlled environment, environment of dictatorship that just swings from one political party to the other, that have just one object in mind, the control of certain financial resources. The control of these financial resources has thus controlled experience. I have showed you how experience is important in metamorphosing the society we live in. Let people be free. 
Let them have their experiences. And once they have their experiences, they come and change the real world we live in. Proudly opposition. That if individuals are living in a society which is brought with problems and limitations, once we create an augmented reality, once we create a virtual world where those problems fail to exist, there is automatically that form of incentive for them to come and change the real world that they live in based on the kind of experiences or the kind of beautiful life that they experience in the virtual world. This is false. This does not exist. This is incoherent. And this is not even feasible. If you are saying that there are problems that exist in the society and people go to a virtual world where um, supposedly they don't um, um, encounter or experience those problems, they would never feel the incentive to come back and change the society, which has the potential of being changed, as opposed to the metaverse, where there are no rules, there are no systems, and the possibility of changing even the problems which may exist is out of question because you never argue that your metaverse or your system is a perfect world, which is not world with problems. There are bound to be problems which yes. exist. Hello, yes. reality is good. There is nothing wrong with the real world, even though it is a system which is worth with their own limitations. But there is a catch, okay? This world is capable of creating systems to change the status quo. So we understand that the real world, the society is wrong with a lot of injustices, inequality, and a whole lot of economic problems. But then there is a possibility, right? Because in like the real world, there are um, existing systems for us to change that narrative. As opposed to your own world, where you think that the existence of certain um, the existence of certain freedoms um, would automatically make your life beautiful. If problems begin to exist in your world, there is no way you can solve it. And at the end of the day, you end up miserable as opposed to you being in reality. The solution is not to augment reality. When there are issues with reality, the solution is not to augment reality in order to escape the solvable limitations of the real world. Panel, realize that the limitations that they talk yes. about in the real world are all solvable through laws, through policies, through systems. We will be able to solve all the problems and harms that they talk about. But we'll even tell you why it is philosophically inconsistent and goes against the principle yes. of common sense to create a, a, a world or to create a virtual reality where people don't even have an idea of the world they exist in. We'll talk to you about the importance of people knowing where they exist in because then they will be able to help them to advance and make where they exist in better. we also talk to you about how the existence of morals and ethics is important for the survival of the human race. Because, panel, get this, the fact that the virtual world exists doesn't mean that automatically the real world is taken out. The real world will continue to face problems. So it is better for you to stay in the real world and create systems or policies that will help you solve. At the end of the day, you being in the virtual world doesn't help solve the, the real world. And you are still or you are still going to face the kind of problems that you face. Panel, we say this is philosophically wrong. It devalues the, the it devalues human beings. It limits them to pawns being controlled by robots and machines. We already have issues with privacy infiltration. We already have issues with um, um, machines and technology replacing our lives. And the replacement of human presence with gadgets. We cannot compound that issue by augmenting reality and creating another world where we think that our supposedly existing problems do not exist, which is actually an illusion. Panel, more importantly, we talk to you about, on our first point, I'll take you, on our first point of real existence. Why is real existence important or very essential to human life and human being as opposed to um, a virtual existence? We say that the knowledge of the real world influences the value of the existence of human beings. When people know the world that they live in, they are better placed to solve problems which may exist. On your side, because metaverse is limitless, there is no boundary. People have no knowledge of the extent, they, they have no knowledge of the whole um, situation of this world. They have absolutely no knowledge. We tell you that people, because people have no knowledge of this world, because it's limitless and too huge, they have no idea about how to solve problems. The metaverse is not a perfect world. That is what we have, we've been trying to hammer. It's not a perfect world. It is, it is bound 
to develop problems. And if people do not have any idea about the world they are in, how then can they create systems or decisions to solve the, the problems that exist in the world? Secondly, and more importantly, on morality and ethics. Panel, we tell you that the existence of morals is what shapes the society. So we cannot and we cannot endorse a society or a reality where we say that people should be left to behave how they deem fit. We cannot endorse a society where there is absolute freedom. We tell you that the minute you allow people to behave however they deem fit, it leads to a breakdown of society. We tell you that the reason why we don't allow people to behave anyhow because then it will lead to a breakdown of society in your world, in the with the existence of your world, then you create the illusion in the minds of people that there should be the existence of absolute freedom, which is not right and which is ideologically inconsistent because you cannot live in a society with other people and expect to have maximum freedom. Now to some rebuttals. Number one, they tell us that the metaverse helps one to self-actualize, which is a very shallow and a very, very narrow understanding of the metaverse. Then if for anything, the metaverse does not help one to actualize, rather it creates an illusion because at the end of the day, you would have to come and face reality. So why not waste all, all your energies for, for a lack of better words? Why not waste all your energies in trying to improve the real world than to be in a system where it creates the illusion for you, it creates a fake notion for you that you are being self-actualized when at the end of the day, you are not self-actualized. Marvel tells you again that the possible addiction of this metaverse, of this reality, will not push people to come and solve issues in their society. Panel, it is important to know that the existence of a metaverse doesn't take away the real world. So if you are going to focus all your energies in the metaverse, a version of which doesn't exist, you are at the end of the day going to leave your society in chaos, in troubles, in ruins, because you will not have that kind of um, that kind of incentive or that kind of drive to solve things in your society. Again, they tell us that on our side, technology is monopolized, which is not true because on their side, because there is no central government, because there is no central government, monopoly is actually, um, technology is actually monopolized. In our world, the existence of governments, right, is able to regulate and is able to control the existence of all these small technologies. So at the end of the day, not one of them will be able to stand and control all the hem of affairs in your system because there is no central relationship. We lack that. There is no monopoly. There is no monopoly on our side. We choose the real world over the virtual world on any day because it's an extension of people's illusion and it is fundamentally. <laughs> Before I speak, I've requested something that the two, the PM and the LO are from whatever school you mentioned. But the truth is, there are three to seconds in the final. I think, I think we all know who's winning. I think we all know who's winning. I think they are going to have well shouted order because you mentioned the sec. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I'll take POIs from all teams. I'm happy to educate them about the motion. Um, panel, talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. We continue to cry about the inequalities that exist in society because of the great stealing. That happened through the slave trade, colonization, new colonization, and the current debt trap that developing countries have been put in. The metaverse is an attempt to reset society in a way that allows an evenly distributed proportion of all resources across the world. Even if we may fail, this is a natural evolution of society because when butter trade and commun communism failed us, we tried monarchs. When monarchs failed us, we tried the republic. And if the republic is failing us, we are going to try decentralized autonomous organizations using the metaverse, which is fine because that is how humanity has to constantly try to change the situations around them in order to be able to live and in order to be able to evolve. Just because you say that, oh, there are problems that exist in our real, like in our real world and around us, so we shouldn't do this, doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to show you this. But two things, responses and extensions. One, they say that the virtual world has no value. That is really ridiculous. Here's why. One, virtual identity is important. That means that individuals 
still have an incentive to act in a reasonable manner in the virtual world. That is why when somebody makes a homophobic tweet, they can get like fired from their company or can get fined. If you make something, if you say something on the internet that's Islamophobic, you can get arrested in the country for breaking rules and regulations, right? That is to tell you that the things that happen in the virtual world are not things that don't have tangible effects. So everything they say in this debate doesn't make any sense because they are thinking about a technology that exists in the 21st century with a 20th century brain. And that is the problem, right? But then secondly, notice how virtual money, virtual money has value, right? The Bitcoin that we all talk about is worth $40,000 plus. That is to say that money can equally have value. Like the biggest example of virtual money is the mobile money. Just because you are sending money through our phones and mobile numbers does not mean that that particular thing doesn't have value. So you can't say that people are going to enter the metaverse and every single thing they are going to do there would have absolutely no value. Because notice that the metaverse is not going to be a place where people go and sit and watch the sky. But it's an like, extension of the society around us. That means that things like economic opportunities will continue to exist. Yes. Because the main incentive that's even getting people to go into the metaverse to begin with is the economic incentive that exists. So notice how like people in the Philippines are making so much money from a game called Axie Infinity, which is based on the metaverse, which allows Philippines who have absolutely no job to make so much money, about $400 every month, something that the Ghanaian economy or no developing economy can give to the people. That is what we are talking about, and that is very important for you to note. So it's not a world where we go and look at the sky and say, oh, wow, look at how the sun sets, and that is amazing. That is not how it works. I'll take your POI. Not you, not you. So don't you think that the, the, the problem that exists in the metaverse can be solved in real life situations? Like so if it's like that doesn't make any sense because that means that you can have the metaverse and the real world existing. Nobody's saying that the metaverse would exist and would close down the real world. Like that is not possible because we still need to produce electricity. We still need food to eat. Like we've already explained to you, audiovisual issues, not every single issue. I understand the motion before you debate, right? Moving on. Notice how virtual issues affect the world around us. Notice how because of cancel culture, people are acting right. That is to say that if there are issues around us in society, they would obviously find their way into the metaverse. And we are not like going to run away from that particular idea. So if there are sexists among us, they are going to end up in the metaverse. What will happen is that if the world that we exist in is a world that is against sexism, it will correct them in the metaverse, which will then translate into our world. Because on Twitter, people come there and say all sorts of nonsense. They are homophobic. They are sexist on Twitter. It is a virtual world. That does not mean that the kind of conversations we have with them on Twitter has absolutely no impact in the real world. Because we'll cancel your stupid ass and you get fired and you realize what that means, right? So, Pando, notice how saying that, oh, because the virtual world exists, we are not going to be able to, like, solve problems in the real world. That's, like, bullshit. Political con conversations and consciousness. It exists in the virtual world. It can exist in the metaverse and exist in the real world. People wanted Trump to be kicked out. You saw that on Twitter and it translated into the election. Notice how what, hap what happens in the virtual world translates into the real world because the virtual world is not a replacement but an extension of our existence in a way that is better because there are so many issues that exist in our real world. Like the barriers that like, make us unable to be able to achieve a lot of things like passport visits and our color and the racism that some people will not stop perpetrating. Moving on to other responses, right? See, your case is dead. Moving on. They say that there's going to be capitalistic interest. That is very problematic because for like one of the few times in the world, the blockchain technology that we are talking about is not something that was started by capitalists. Notice that before Facebook got into the metaverse, Sandbox, Decentraland, all built versions of the metaverse. Do you know what this means? This means that at the very core of the metaverse are several options that are being like run by several individuals or several groups. What this means is that in a world where you can't choose the country that you are giving birth to in, and you can't even, like not everybody can aspire to live in another country because of the cost, etc. involved. You live in a world where, in the metaverse, where you can choose different universes. Think of it like Marvel, where there are different multi like multiverses and universes where individuals can actualize in different ways. That is the kind of yeah. like choice you have. Stop, you're bad me. Moving on to other important things, right? They say oh, individuals will not get better. Like, dude, if somebody has to go to work and get money to feed their kids, they will not be stuck in the metaverse. The only people that could be addicted in your world are people that have absolutely nothing to do. But the point of it is that if they are going to be in the metaverse, that is going to be the place where they are going to find jobs and they are going to find ways to edify themselves and improve themselves. So that entire argument about addiction is very, is very problematic because they said that when books came out that, oh, books are going to stop people from talking to themselves because people are going to, trap, be, are going to be trapped in the pages and they are not going to talk to anyone. We read books. We are not zombies walking around the earth. 
real conversations continue to take place. They are talking about things as though we are in the 1980s or even 1800s. And that's what the problem is, because we need to change the minds of people like this in order for society to move on, right? But then, panel, notice how they say that, oh, no, like, very few people are going to access the metaverse. That is false. We've already shown you that when mobile phones started, smartphones were expensive. But as more people want to access smartphones, there is going to be a lot of companies that will try to disrupt the smartphone industry. Same thing for the metaverse. Then Marvel says everybody is going to be addicted. If you say a few people are going to have the access to the metaverse, then everyone cannot be like addicted, right? So that in itself is a contradiction, meaning that they don't seem to have a proper case in this debate and it's going to like follow into CD's case. But most importantly, panel, why do we win this debate? The lottery of bet analysis that Apoku gives you, the opportunities that I have analyzed to you in this debate, are principles that not even CEO can run away from. In a world where we have been able to prove to you that we are able to break the fundamental things that stop us from being able to evolve and self-actualize, we have won the debate. It's been a good day to close. Yeah. Okay, so I'm beginning my speech now. So, panel, four main things in this debate. First of all, I'll be providing you extensions you don't get from opening government and on why closing government wins this debate, right? Secondly, I'll show you, like, I'll be having integrated rebuttals and dealing with a lot of the cases raised by opening opposition. Third, I'll be showing you why in the metaverse that they create, like the scenario that they create, the metaverse won't work, right? And lastly, I'll show you, like, alternatives. Even though we don't need to prove any alternative, or we don't need to show any alternative necessarily, we'll show you how the real life situations, like in this particular instance, or the situation that exists, right, will be solved without the metaverse. The, the metaverse is completely needless in this particular debate, right? And closing government will show you why that should exist, right? So, first of all, on, on, on our extensions, right, firstly, we, we, we argue the idea that, well, the metaverse creates a false sense of utopia. We get that argument a little bit from opening government, but I'll provide you with more analytical extensions from that from closing government, right? Secondly, we argue the idea of mor morality and utilitarianism, right? Where, like, the consequences of metaverse will have, like, that impact on the, like, larger society, and not only on, like, a small, like, um, like a small, like, um, um, section of society, right? Thirdly, we argue, like, self-actualization. We'll distinguish ourselves from our opening and show you why, in, like, this particular instance, not having the option of metaverse promotes a better self-actualization than the metaverse here. Now, f like, fifthly, we argue the idea of, of personhood, right? We'll show you why, like, it, it, in this particular instance, right, the, the, like, the elimination of the metaverse promotes, like, or, like, more, more or less is in tune with the idea of um, personhood, right? I'll quickly relax. Now, first of all, we argue that the idea of metaverse like creates a false sense of utopia. What does what, what does this mean, right? It's straight from the whole idea of existentialism. Like the very existence of human is to be recognized and accepted into the society. If you create a virtual world, right, what to do is that people are straight from that particular idea, or people are less like motivated to be in that particular metaverse, right? So in, in our world, we show you why, like, the whole idea of existentialism, it is very important that human beings should exist in the real world. And that is why we believe that it's very, very important in this particular debate that the individuals in all instances should exist, right? Now, moving on, right, we show you that on the impact of this existentialism, metaverse clouds the individual's judgment to make rational, like, to make rational decisions because you are in a real-life scenario, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are in a, you are in a virtual world where, like, everything goes, right? So Elisha's point on, well, like, meta, the, the, um, people, people are, um, um, rape apologies, people are whatever on, on in the real world. Like we, we tell you that in this particular instance, the metaverse like further perpetuates these things because like already the virtual world that exists already perpetuates these things. Like 50 years ago, 70 years ago, we've now seen a rise in these particular instances. They don't show us how the metaverse like will correct these particular instances in this particular debate, right? We recognize the need that these things exist. That is why it is very important and it will be counterintuitive to the very existence of human life to like stray away from the whole idea of metaverse, right? Now moving on to you can take, I'll take you my fifth minutes, right? Now, moving on to the whole idea of, like, morality and the consequences of this, right? We argue that meta, the consequences of metaverse will result in, a, like, like, action that will, like, be harmful not only to the, like, it will be harmful to the, the very society in which they live in. So, like, something like climate action, like, right? Something that all the, the opening sides go to analyze in this debate, right? They don't tell you how, like, the metaverse in this particular instance has, like, 
huge climatic effects in this um, uh, like in this particular situation because there have been activists or there have been activist movement against climate change right if you perpetuate the idea of metaverse already in the status quo scenarios exist where like there there like there's wide demonstration and wide agitation for climate change and climate action right the metaverse will only like further perpetuate that that is not something we are going to buy into and like there's no way we we'll, like we we'll buy into uh, any idea that would we'll, like be like counterproductive society. Anything that would destroy the society is, to, is what we are totally against. The metaverse on the last scale of things like has a very like um, adverse effect on society. Something that you don't get from our opening exclusively from side closing governments, right? Fifth minutes, relax. Now, on, on the idea of personhood, right? Like the whole idea of metaverse is going to create a whole false sense of illusion. So opening government tells you that, yes, like it creates this false sense of illusion or false hope for people, right? Now, as an analytical extension to that, what we tell you is that like it inhibits the, like, the ability of individuals to self-actualize in the society. And so it introduces the idea of self-actualization in this particular case because it is, it is very, it's like it's the interest of individuals to self-actualize in the society and not a virtual world. The virtual world like self-actualization does not automatically translate to the real life self-actualization. Opposition largely fails to tell you how the whole idea of like self-actualizing or how people actualizing in a metaverse will result in people like having a self-actualization in the real world, right? Something you get from closing government exclusively in this debate, right? Now, the whole, like, now, like, let me tell you why this whole idea of metaverse won't work. So now, straight to my rebuttal house. Now, first of all, the impact that the metaverse will have, as opposition wants to tell us, right? So, Apeku paints to you the nice picture that, oh, a boy is suffering and he can dream of going to Barcelona or he can dream of having that reality of being in Barcelona, right? Like, those impacts can, like, they already exist in the status quo. What this means is that in the status quo, like, that's why there, there's internet. They don't show us how, like, the people in the metaverse, like, will actually have these particular things to them. Like, I, we don't get any analysis on that from them, right? Also, also on the whole idea of, like, like virtual identity. The virtual identity already exists in the status quo. That they admit to. Like, there's their social media platform, right? What can be done in the metaverse, like, like the, the whole idea exists in the status quo. They don't show us how like uniquely the whole like concept of metaverse will have any significant impact on the society, right? In this debate, right, ultimately we are looking at the interest of not only the individual who wants to self-actualize, but the but, the, but 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 also the interest of the larger society who also wants to self-actualize in this particular instance, right? They fail to, to analyze the societal impact of this in this particular debate, right? Something we, we show we will show you subsequently in this debate, right? Now no. Relax. So rest will take you. Now on 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 um on on, on also 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 on the also the metaverse like does not have any significant impact on the environment. What it does is that like it's diminished the ability of the societies to self-actualize. It sets back the pace of society 50 years back, 70 years back. The, the whole technology or the whole like um so like the whole idea of metaverse or like the, the the entire the entire resources that could be diverted into metaverse, right? Could be used to solve this real life scenario. They are going to create a virtual world for people, right? Without like actually providing the real world with any real life scenario. If people if people have utopia in the metaverse, right? Yes, they can achieve self actualization and all that in the metaverse. But if people have utopia in the metaverse, right? At the end of the day, they'll come back to the real life situation here. How then do you solve the real life situation? You don't provide us with any analysis on how the metaverse has any direct translation or has any direct reference to that. I think we are out of order. Let's take you now. Now, also on analysis, right? Uh, also on alternatives, right? Panel, we believe that this particular debate it is not necessarily about alternative, but where we, we as government side, we need to push or we need to show like a, a, a sense of goodwill, right? We believe that in this particular instance, like the the whole like capitalistic ventures or the whole capitalistic um, profit or incentive to make the metaverse a virtual reality, right? Which in actual sense is going to benefit only like a, a, a small section of society, right? We believe that those funds or those particular things can be divested into like real life to solve real life particular situation. The, the, the revenues from metaverse can actually be used to, so we, we advocate for a society where we, we, we solve the, 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 the issues not only in virtual life, but also in, in the real world. We've never been this proud to propose. Thank you. <coughs> Panel, from the beginning of time, escapism has always been something you've experienced, right? We all read books, Harry Potter, Oliver Twist, etc. It gave us a chance to experience worlds we never experienced. But the problem is, those worlds we experience in books, in movies, have always been worlds that have been given to us by people. It has never been us having a chance to fully create and experience 
our own versions of reality. Panel, that is a case CEO brings. And unlike OO, what we'll show you is how we win not only on scope, but also on a full access to personal agency, morality, and how that creates social change. I think government keeps on asking us, asking us questions on. Before I go on to that, some responses. First, government says that there is no central regulation and no control. And panel, we say we are completely fine with this because the very problem with the world right now is that our access to justice is always fettered by governments, by people, by corporate bodies. Panel, in this world, we are decoupled from these continuing things that cripple our full access to justice and morality. And so we are fine with that, that world. Yeah, yeah. Next, they say that there are existing problems to, to uh, there are existing ways to change problems in society. We agree. But panel, we say there is nothing wrong with an expansion of this. Because by living and experiencing metaverse, we are able to transpose our experiences in that world into, into society, into the real world. Because now we have a full view of what that world could look like, and we can transpose that into reality to create change. But lastly, they argue capitalism. And note this. At the very worst, even if that exists in our world, in your world, there is no personal agency. Because people are tied to the capitalist system that control the real world currently and are never able to have access to agency themselves in and any world they live in. But now let's, add, let's go to the main argument that CEO brings you in this debate. First thing, what is the valuation of morality or betterment in the first place, right? You hear an argument from governments that the real life is more valuable and it runs through the entire, op the entire opening side as well. The idea that we must always aspire to only real life. That real life is what is valuable. Panel note, the determination of value is incumbent on the human being. So if humans decide that metaverse to them is a better world to aspire to, we are fine with that. Because in your world, you only have access to the real world. What we tell you in here is that we are fine with people choosing their own version of reality. And so if someone wants to aspire in metaverse, they are better off. Panel, what O doesn't tell you, O only argues the merits of metaverse. We tell you that we are fine with creating another world where people choose to be themselves in there. They choose metaverse as their version of reality. In your world, it is only one single construct. And we say the valuation of what real life should be in the first place. That philosophy of what life is in the first place should be granted to human beings to create in metaverse. In your world, the idea of life is a construct limited to only what they are given. P.O.I. Colleges, if Zuckerberg's version of metaverse is what you are in, it means that you are living in a utopia of what Zuckerberg thinks is the utopia. That agency is federal limited. For instance, China's utopia will be communist. Shut utopia. up. <laughs> what he is talking about is... Uh, that there will be capitalism, right? And that they will control the utopia, whatever. In my third argument, you get why it's so flat anyway. So you get it. Calm down. Second argument. The full experience of agency. Panel, in only real life, justice is dependent on existent truth. What we are told is true in the real world is what we think justice is, right? In metaverse, what you have is an unfettered access to the full conception of change, a full conception of justice. What all I fail to show you is how, in this world, there are no barriers, really. There is no government in there to determine what happens to you or to interfere with your thinking. It is entirely you and your choice. And so only in Metaverse do humans, for the first time, get a chance to experience the full conception of change. Panel, we say, how is that different from reality? In status quo, what you think is right is what you are told, what you've heard, what you think. You have always thought that, ideally. In this world, you get to live those thoughts. Those thoughts become real. And so there is more proximity, personally, to truth, to what justice is. Because now in this world, you have a better approximation to your um, hitherto uh, um, ideal, ideal, um, idealist idea of what justice is. In this world, idealism meets reality. And we are finally, as human beings, for the first time, able to access a full moral truth and to experience this. But most importantly on scope, what, how do we better the real world, right? Let's say the, the real world is the best world. How do we better it? OO says that there's personal agency and that you get to personally experience metaverse and come and create change. Panel, why do we win on scope? We say 
there equally exists an incentive for firms, governments, and larger bodies to begin to create a real, good, just world in the real world. Why? Because they know that if they don't do that, then they are competing with human beings who are escaping into metaverse. And so that innate incentive to want to hold on to people will give firms, large corporations, governments, incentive now to begin to create justice. Panel, we win on scope. Opening only argues to you how individuals will get to create change. On our side, we argue how firms, governments, in a bid to compete with reality, will have an incentive then to create change. On our work panel, we win on scope, we win on change. Closing. Okay, so how, so how, how does like, the meta, how does government agencies create this change that you're advocating for? That's a dumb question. I mean, Metaverse is open to everyone, right? And so anyone can access Metaverse, right? And so all you have to do then is now, you know someone escaping into Metaverse because they are poor, they want to be wealthy, they are tied to of being shackled to capitalism. In a real world now, governments have more incentive to break down capital structures because they know people are escaping now, are leaving their existence world to create their own universe. In a big, because governments and firms thrive on people, and so that incentive to hold on to people will give them reason then to begin to create change, needed change in the real world, so people will not escape into metaverse and no more patronize them as firms, as governments, as large corporations. On our side, if what you want here is solvency, if what you want here is a better real world, we show you how on scope we win. But most importantly, panel, always go for a world where human beings have the best access to morality. In that world, we give you the best and full version of moral access and how on scope and change we win on psychological opposition. All is limited. Proudly, opposition. <laughs> <laughs> Panel, the major clashes we get from this debate are on experience, are on self-actualization, and are on sustainability, right? So before I start, Apreku came to tell us that the metaverse does not change the individual's response to real life situation where he gave the the um, analogy of someone who is who is hungry and metaverse does not change the fact that the person is hungry. This is exactly what we are arguing. That the fact that there is a world that it seems as though there are um, th th it seems as though there are things that have been solved does not translate into the solving of that problem in real world. And so if they said uh, there's a world that creates an um, illusion of hope, of peace. In real life, this peace does not exist. And so their point on experience, their point on, on individuals being able to recreate their own world is flawed. Because when you move out, the real, the, the, the real world is still existing. These problems are still existing. On experience, right, they tell us that the metaverse gives experiences which would otherwise not be experienced. Two responses. This is false because there are alternative ways through which individuals can experience these same things. You talk about Paris. There are countless avenues for experiencing videos on Paris. The fact that there's a metaverse that allows you to see Paris does not create, does not give the individual that ex that so experience of being in Paris. If there, there's a thing on, on, on the point of self-actualization, if an individual's um, um, perception of being self-actualized is having traveled and having gone to Paris. What gives that person that actualization is having gone there, being able to actually achieve that situation in reality and not an illusion. An illusion does not translate to their self-actualization and for the ability of that individual yes. to have reached that point that they want to, to, to reach. A second response to that, right, is that it creates complacency. And so individuals are less incentivized to go through ways that will actively let them reach their point of self-actualization. That means that if there's a particular experience or if there's a particular place, you want a particular level you want to attain, because of the illusion that the metaverse creates, you do not focus on actively being able to experience those things in reality. Instead, you are okay with the illusion that metaverse creates, right? Yeah. On sustainability, 
we tell you that it is not sustainable climate wise which you get exclusively from us why because the blockchain we have things like um, bitcoin things like um um, um um, those cryptocurrencies, right, which involve a high level of energy, which means that for a short level, a, a short period, the computers that are supposed to generate those activities which um, regulate Bitcoin, right, are, are, um, are what is, is supposed to do it. And so there's a short energy span. And so after a short period of time, right, the computers and all those um, um, electronic devices which are supposed to regulate the process they die out and then this creates a huge energy and then it creates a huge um, environmental a huge environmental um, 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 crisis right which actively goes against climate change again because climate change is an urgent situation where we are fighting for in the same way metaverse is going to bank on these same um, electronic devices it is so it's, it's going to bank on a huge level of energy which is not sustainable which you've seen from the example i've given you and it's even more problematic because it is huge it is expansive it is global and so there'll be no sustainable means of having disposed them of and so there's supposed to be a continuous measure of, of um, letting it um, um, of, of letting it um, regenerate, right? Which produces a, a backlog on society. I'll take your few ideas. Okay, so we already you. argued this. Good. It's the reason why you argue how people never experience it in real life. We are saying it is fine if your ideal actualization is in metaverse, right? Stop limiting people's experience to only the real world. Actualizing a metaverse too is completely fine. Engage that. The point we are saying is the point they raise is that. These individuals can actualize through experiences. We are saying these experiences are illusions. They are not reality. And so they are not self-actualization. Because an individual wants to experience the reality of traveling, of going wherever they want. They do not want the illusion. And thirdly, it is more problematic because there's an escapism which OG tells us. But extensively and analytically from us, we tell you in direct rebuttal to Solomon's case, where he tells you that and the government know. will be incentivized to um, um, solve these problems because their citizens are moving from the real world problems to metaverse. This is inconsistent right. because if so if, if direct um, if active social pressure and advocacy did not work for the government to change these problems, how does escapism, how does individuals moving to an illusion incentivize the government to solve these problems? Panel, the problem is we exist as real human beings. We exist in reality. There are real world problems which have to be actively solved. An illusion in no way solves issues like racism. The fact that you are able to create a world where there's no racism does not mean in reality there's no re racism because you are going to move out and realize that there is still racism, there is still oppression. In, in, that illusion does not automatically translate and does not change the, the way individuals react to you. And so if you create an illusion that there's no racist world, this is false and this does not actively drive you to social change because the individuals who are being racist or who are being oppressed or who are being marginalized are not being protected and so they are relegated to their the metaverse and then they are still oppressed they are still marginalized and then that it goes it's a recurrent cycle of oppression of vulnerability right again we tell you that um, um morality which is supposed to be a basic case in this debate uh, the morality of an action should be based on the consequences that flow out of the action. And so if the consequence of metaverse is going to result in escapism, which results in the government or in individuals not attacking real world problems, then it is not justified because these problems will still continue to exist in real life. Panel, the reason why the motion appears to be dissatisfied until you get to see you is because of one important reason. Patel is smiling because he understands. It's because CEO is the only team that is able to identify and place the appropriate philosophical and conceptual emphasis that the preamble to the motion provides. 
for the opening team, what they essentially debate is this house regrets the metaverse. On CEO, we give you the philosophical relevance of the metaverse itself as a basis for why we should not reject it. But more so on why we win the debate. There are three essential clashes in this debate. The first one is execution. Number two, the universal and conceptual impact of the metaverse. And number three, the personal impact of the metaverse as a basis for regret. On first one, execution. What do you get from OG? OG argues that, oh, global access is impossible. But then in the same case, they argue to you that all their harms occur with the majority of people participating. So on that case, they cannot win either clash and they don't have enough substance to place any high in this debate. But then they argue that there's going to be some monopolization, which we clearly show you that based on how it is open source, those technicalities don't really matter because the metaverse is constantly evolving. At this very stage, it is most in itself a concept more than its execution. So all the arguments on the execution don't really matter as much as engaging the conceptual impact of the metaverse itself. What does CG argue? CG argue that, oh, money can be better used, which is a very ridiculous argument because we need to engage the impact of that, that the impact that we are engaging instead of this and the money can be better used because we can use that for basically anything because a health and many of those things appear to seem relevant unless you engage what we are telling you is the real impact mm -hmm. of what we are arguing. They argue again that, oh, it is going to be negative to the climate. Now, this is a very uh, meager argument, but let me give you three responses. Firstly, mm -hmm. money, for, uh, paper money, is far more destructive because paper deforestation affects the climate more. But number two, there are much worse causes of climate change, cars, etc. At the very best, the virtual world is going to decrease human movement with cars and it's going to decrease much of the social participation that causes real climate change and climate dest destruction. That's the execution clash. We give you responses that show that execution is not really important, but because it happens, let me just engage it. We are done with that. Now, universal and conceptual impact. What do you get from OG? OG argues that, oh, it is going to reduce the drive for improvement in life. Now, OO gives you one response on how you need to perceive the change in order to be it. I'm going to give you two more unique and stronger responses as to why we have more improvement on our side. Firstly, access to the metaverse, as they argue, could be capital intensive. Note that the human conditions in society need to be better for human beings to access the metaverse. So if the metaverse is still all that matters to them, they will still care about getting access to electricity, access to employment, to buy data, to connect to the metaverse. So at the point where participation in the metaverse is related to human societal conditions, they are still incentivized to advocate for better social conditions. Number two, Solomon argues to you competition, right? Governments and firms gain incentive or gain their profits from active participation in society, you going to event centers, you participating in the social scene, the services sector is gradually and much more significantly overtaking the product sector. What does this mean? This means that these companies have to directly compete with the ideals provided by the metaverse because the more you stay in the metaverse, the less you're able to attend events and spend more money outside in what they call the real world. So on our side, you provide direct competition. An example of this, the US has for many years, reduce their tax laws because you know that if they don't make their tax systems better, you are going to participate in the economy of Panama, etc. So based on that same principle, you are going to force them by sucking out their profit incentives and forcing them to make the world better so that we are able to participate for them to get what they want. Now, what does CG argue? CG argues that, oh, it's an illusion. Notice that this is a very irrelevant point because the value of something is not based on their perception of reality. It is based on the impact. As long as human beings are happier, they are better off, they are enjoying life, that happiness is the only moral outcome that is of worth in this debate, not their perception or reality or whatever. If you watch a movie and you are happy, it gives you a moral outcome as opposed to actually going to watch a real war occurring. What we care about is the moral outcome of human happiness, which is the end of all human actions. What does CEO argue to you on this clash? Firstly, Solomon argues to you emphatically that what this does is gives us the opportunity to reimagine and change social concepts. It allows us to simulate ideal worlds, which is able to cause real social change. I'm going to emphasize on that more in my speech. 
Note that in the previous age, these thought experiments of John Rawls' theory of justice of the book 1984, The Three-Body Problem, Animal from Crime and Punishment, these are very relevant books that have, by virtue of their ability to simulate and reconceptualize the universe, have sparked social change that we can record has happened over time. What we do on our side is that we socialize this experience to allow everyone to actively experience that re-imagination. So hence, you can imagine that on our side, all the impacts that these fictional or simulatory works of art have been able to do, we socialize and expand them more on our side. And by doing that, we are able to constantly push society forward by creating a reimaginative force that enforces ideas and creates a renewed expression. But secondly, we, act, we enhance morality. How? Because by providing more agency in the metaverse, what we do is to allow for more possibilities and increased choice, which means that by that, we are able to enhance the moral status of human beings and allow them to have more agency and enhance their morality. Because morality exists only to the extent that agency exists. So if what the motion wants is for us to redefine morality, we do it more on our side by providing more agency. Now, personal impact, they argue that, oh, there is going to be addiction, that real life is more valuable. Note that this, like what OO says, these are arguments that we've heard forever, but with the provision of technology also presents the provision of support systems, right? Social media has come, but we've also had uh, psychological services that have been able to help people who are experiencing addiction in terms of the disease term. So for the most extreme actions, note that the evolution of technology also presents the evolution of solutions mm -hmm. to its excesses. So on our side, we are well prepared for every single outcome. Ask yourself one question. In which world are we able to achieve more philosophical and conceptual impacts with the existence of the metaverse or not? On our side, we prove to you why that happens more on the side of opposition. On a 5 2 split, it's closing government. All right. Coming in third place on a five on a five one one split. We have opening government. Now winning this debate. You guys, it was quite difficult here, yeah? but it was necessary. On the fourth three splits, we have. <laughs> Closing opposition. <laughs> Opening opposition came second on a four to one split. <laughs> Thank you very much. And wait for announcements. Elijah, any announcements?